Hi everybody and welcome back to Lost Genre Reddit Stories. This post is from the subreddit Am I the A-hole and it's by user Pixies Love Petals. Am I the A-hole for telling my sister's boyfriend to get out after he refused to eat the meal I cooked? So here's what happened. I, 28 female, invited my sister, 25 female, and her boyfriend, 26 male, over for dinner. I loved cooking and had spent hours preparing this fancy meal. Homemade pasta, a slow-cooked ragu, a salad, and a tiramisu for dessert. I was really proud of it and excited to have them over. When they arrived, everything was fine at first. We sat down and I started serving the food. Her boyfriend, let's call him Steve, stared at the pasta for a moment, then looked at me and said, I don't eat carbs. At first I thought he was joking, but nope, he was dead serious. He goes on about how he's super into keto and carbs are the enemy. Okay, fine, that's his choice. But when I offered to make him a salad or something else on the spot, he refused and said that I should have known about his diet beforehand. This is where it gets weird. He then pulls out a small Tupperware container from his bag, what? Filled with what looked like boiled chicken and broccoli, and starts to eat it at my dinner table while the rest of us are trying to enjoy the meal I spent hours making. I was stunned and honestly kind of insulted. I told him it was rude to bring his own food without mentioning it to me beforehand and he should have at least given me a heads up. He then goes off about how people need to respect his dietary choices and that I was being controlling by not accommodating his needs. At this point, I had enough. I told him, if you can't eat what's served and won't even let me make something else, then maybe you should just get out. He stood up, said something like, I'm just trying to be healthy, grabbed his Tupperware and walked out. Yeah, dude, don't forget your Tupperware. My sister stayed for a bit but eventually left too, saying I overreacted. Now, my sister's mad at me, saying I embarrassed her boyfriend and made them both feel unwelcome. My mom thinks I should apologize, but my friends are on my side, saying Steve was being incredibly rude. Am I the a-hole for telling him to get out? Well, OP, in my opinion, no, you weren't rude. He was the one that was rude. First of all, he assumed that you would know that he was on a keto diet, which, did you? I mean, you didn't mention that anybody gave you a heads up about his diet, so why should you know about it? It's not like he's the most important person in your life. So if anybody should have told you anything, that would have been your sister, right? Now, if Steve would have a condition like celiac disease or he would be allergic to some ingredients in the meal that you made, sure, definitely understand him refusing, still not understanding him bringing his own Tupperware, but they still should have let you know. But he wasn't either of those things. He was just being rude and calling you controlling for not accommodating yourself to his dietary choices yeah, that's not controlling at all. So no, OP, I don't think you're the a-hole and I don't think you owe Steve any kind of an apology. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments section and now let's check out the community comments. Cat Jarman's Pants says, he's a twat because, well, keto baby, but your sister is the big a-hole. It was her responsibility to either make sure you knew about twat boy's weird diet and to try and come up with something that either you could all eat or pave the way for him to bring whatever soulless slop he wanted to eat. Or indeed, to decide that given the effort you put into cooking and hosting, it might be better if twat boy sits this one out. I probably wouldn't have told him to piss off because, well, I'm British, but I'd have felt as insulted as you. Not the a-hole. Tessie1966 says, My son's girlfriend has a gluten allergy. I know this because my son informed me before I made food for them. My husband's daughter is vegetarian. My daughter has a milk allergy. I wouldn't know any of this unless someone told me. You aren't a mind reader. The Tomahawk97 says, quote, But when I offered to make him a salad or something else on the spot, he refused and said that I should have known about his diet beforehand. End quote. He's deluded. It's his responsibility to make you aware of any dietary requirements before he came over. You're not a psychic. You even offered to make him a different meal afterwards and he refused. Not the a-hole. And don't invite him for dinner again. 
Casehead says, everybody sucks here. Everyone here sucks. Your sister's boyfriend was a little rude about the way he said it, but all he said was he couldn't eat your food. You acted unhinged by freaking out on him because he wanted to eat his own food rather than what you made. Why do you need to control what other people eat? Why did you throw a tantrum and ruin the whole dinner for everyone when you could have just been gracious, moved on, and eaten the dinner you made with your guests? Instead, you acted very uncouth, went off the handle, and ruined everyone's evening because you couldn't be flexible over something that didn't really need to affect you. Additional information from OP's comments. My sister didn't give me a heads up. I'm not sure if she even knew how serious she was about the whole kiddo thing, because she never mentioned it. She eats pretty much anything, so I assumed he was the same. But even if she had, I feel like it still would have been polite for him to at least say something beforehand instead of just showing up with his own meal. I would have happily made something kiddo friendly if I had known. So the majority of the community agrees that OP is not the a-hole and OP confirmed that the sister didn't tell her anything about his keto diet so his outrage about OP not knowing I still think is unjustified although some people say everybody sucks here I disagree with that. I think Steve sucks. But anyways we have an update so let's move on with that to see how this story ends. Well y'all buckle up because things have escalated in a way I never expected. After my initial post, I figured things would calm down once my sister had time to cool off. Spoiler alert, they did not. So the day after I told Steve to leave, my sister texts me saying they want to talk things through at a family dinner. I assumed it would be just the three of us, maybe at a neutral restaurant where we could ash it out like adults. Nope. Instead, my sister invites my parents, my brother, and Steve's parents to this dinner at my parents' house, turning it into some kind of weird intervention. I show up thinking it'll just be a casual conversation, but the moment I walk in, Steve's mom, let's call her Carol, is already going off about how Steve has always had special dietary needs and how people who care about him should respect his boundaries. The woman acts like the guy has a life-threatening allergy, not a trendy diet. My mom is sitting there looking super uncomfortable, while my dad's just quietly sipping his beer, clearly wishing he were anywhere else. So, Carol starts listing off Steve's dietary restrictions, and she's acting like I personally offended the whole keto community by serving pasta. Then, praise yourself, Carol pulls out a folder. Yes, a literal folder with printouts. She hands one to me, one to my mom, and one to my dad. I'm flipping through this thing and it's full of Steve's dietary guidelines, suggested meal plans, and even a list of keto-friendly restaurants we could go to in the future. At this point, I'm doing everything I can not to laugh, so am I. But it gets worse. Steve pipes up and says he's willing to forgive me for disrespecting his lifestyle if I agree to host a redo dinner where I follow his dietary restrictions to the letter. He says this will prove I'm serious about making amends and respecting his needs going forward. I thought he was joking, but no, he was dead serious. He even pulled out his phone to show me some keto recipe apps that I might find helpful. I was in total shock. My sister, by the way, said absolutely nothing during all of this, just staring at her plate like she wanted to disappear. My mom, bless her, tries to smooth things over by suggesting we all just eat whatever we want when we're together. But Carol snaps, it's not that simple. She says that in her family, they all follow keto together. And that's why Steve is so passionate about it. At this point, I've had enough. I stood up and said, look, I'm not redoing the dinner. I'm not making anyone a special keto feast. If Steve can't eat what I cook, that's fine. But bringing his own meal to my dinner without even telling me was disrespectful and I'm not apologizing for feeling that way. And then, this is where it gets absolutely bonkers, Steve's dad stands up, points at me and says, This is exactly why Steve doesn't trust women to understand him. They always make it about themselves. Yeah, because Steve doesn't make it about himself, right? 
The whole room went silent. My dad finally spoke up saying, I think it's time for you all to leave and started walking toward the door, basically escorting Steve's parents out. Steve and my sister stayed behind, but Steve was furious. He started yelling about how family should support each other and then accused me of trying to sabotage their relationship because I'm jealous of what they have. At that point, I just walked out and left the whole mess behind. Here's the kicker though. A couple of days later, my sister called me and told me she and Steve were taking a break because she needs time to think. Apparently, this whole keto fiasco was the last straw in a long list of controlling behavior from Steve. She didn't realize just how bad it was until the whole family saw it play out at dinner. She even told me that Steve had been trying to get her to follow his diet for months, but she was hiding snacks in her car just to get a break from all the keto madness. So now, Steve's gone full radio silent. My sister is staying with me for the time being and I'm still getting passive aggressive texts from Carol about how hurt Steve is and how he's just misunderstood. Honestly, I'm just glad my sister is finally seeing how controlling this guy was. Wow, I guess Galileo was absolutely wrong cause our galaxy seems to be Steve centric and Carol being the main planet orbiting. Good for you OP for calling them out on their crap. I'm pretty sure this isn't the first of Steve's relationships that have ended because his partners have made it about them and not about Steve's dietary choices or whatever. Get bent. So again OP, good on you for calling them out and good that your sister is finally seeing what Steve's really like. Hopefully she'll wise up and break up. In the meantime, take care OP and thanks for sharing. And now let's move on to the next post that also has an update. This post is from the subreddit Am I Overreacting and it's by user Dangerous Contact 737 Am I overreacting? A friend of mine invited me to join a cooking potluck group. Turns out it has existed for months and consists of all our friends except me. This sounds incredibly high school, but we are all at least 40 and I've known some of these people for almost 30 years. Today my friend randomly texts me, what do you think about ethnic cuisine? I said I hadn't had it very many times, but I liked it when I did. He mentioned that he had a group that got together and made recipes to bring and share. They met fairly frequently and would I be interested? They were even meeting today if I wanted to join them, but I wouldn't be expected to cook anything. I was busy today, but I said I'd be interested for the future, so he invites me to their Facebook group. Turns out, it is every single one of our mutual friends. It's been around since January and they've gotten together at least once a month. I am absolutely furious, but am I overreacting? My problem with this is that we all know each other and I am just as much of a foodie and hobby cook as the rest of them. They all know this because I have invited them to my house for food, made them food, brought them food, participated in potlucks, etc. But they all formed this group without inviting me. More than that, we actually have a whole ass other Facebook group to which I am invited which is for suggesting restaurants and other get togethers for the purpose of enjoying food. Instead I find out, while I've been just so understanding about how busy everyone is and how I've deferred to their schedules and tried to not take it personally when people can't hang out, they've all been hanging out with each other regularly. Is my anger justified or am I out of line? Well, OP, taking your post as the only source of information here, I would say no, you are justified in being angry that your friends are excluding you from something, considering you share other instances. But then doing a double take, I have a question. Are you like the expert foodie in the group and all your friends are like amateurs or that they just don't know much about cooking and mess things up sometimes? Maybe that's why they get together without you. It could be that they're just self-conscious or you are overly critical of things sometimes and they just don't want to deal with that. Look, if it was just one or two friends that purposefully made this group to avoid you, then they would be very crappy. But you've told us that it's basically all your friends that have this group without you. So maybe it's not just them, it could be you too. And this is just an assumption because I don't have any more information. So what do you guys think is going on here? Let me know in the comment section and now let's check out the community comments. 
Jolly Security 4771 says, My feelings would be a bit hurt and I would definitely not consider them close friends. They're allowed to gather and do it without you for whatever reason, but it's not unreasonable for you to feel raw about it. One thing is for sure, I would absolutely not attend now. Bleepy Swipey says, Look, it's perfectly reasonable that you are feeling hurt, but it is time to take a long deep look in a mirror. They all made a new group with the purpose of not having you in. You did something. You either pissed off someone or you're being rude to someone or something along those lines. Why? Maybe you were stressed at work or something at home or a bunch of other things. But I guess you started being an ass and made someone or more of them uncomfortable. I would gently and genuinely ask that one friend that invited you. Sit with him and listen. Don't get defensive and start justifying whatever he tells you. Listen and learn. My bet is that you started behaving better lately and they are letting you back in. And Opie responds, That's just it. I haven't been. I haven't seen much of these people at all. We're all busy with jobs and lives. There is literally nothing I could have done that anyone would be mad about. I've just been going about my life like, well, we'll get together when we have the chance. Turns out, they just don't want to bother. I don't even particularly care about being a C-list friend and I don't expect to be invited to everything. But it really feels like a slap in the face to be, I don't know, so openly excluded. Especially when one of the people involved is someone who doesn't hesitate to get in touch when she needs something and owes me about 500 favors for all the times I've happily helped her out. I don't do things expecting quid pro quo, but this has really sent home in a big way that that friendship is clearly nowhere near as reciprocal as I thought. And the polemicist says, I'd be feeling hurt and upset too. However, there is a chance it came about slowly. It could have been just like three people who decided to do it a couple of times. After that, maybe one was telling another friend about it and they decided to come. Now it's eight months later, maybe the group has grown and they've realized almost all their friends are involved but a few. Maybe they're inviting the last few now. I'm not saying don't feel hurt. I'm just saying they might not have planned it in a way to exclude you. So the community has seen OP's situation from different perspectives, but they mostly agree that it's okay for OP to be offended, however they should figure out what happened as to why they've been invited now. So now, let's move on to the update to see how this story ends. After venting my feelings to Reddit and having a sleepless night, I decided to calmly text the friend back who invited me. I asked him, can I ask a question? This group looks like it's been around for a while. Are you really looking to add more people? I don't really want to wreck an established vibe. He gave me a thoughtful reply about how he wanted to try the group with the people who were most likely to want to keep doing it and see if it had any staying power past the first couple events. Since that was successful, now he wanted to invite a few more people. I thought that was a reasonable explanation and I am definitely less mad. As many people pointed out, he did invite me. He also invited me to the group chat. There was a chat too. I found out that both he and 500 Favors Friend had been organizing these events all summer and she's hosted two of them. The last time I saw this woman was in July. What month is it? Almost October? Where she proudly showed off her new patio furniture and I jokingly said I really looked forward to her next grill party. Which happened to be the following weekend. Not that I was having invited. I did read the chat and there was certainly no kind of let's make sure OP doesn't find out involved at any point. But I still feel pretty upset that I've been trying to make time for someone I thought was one of my closest friends. And not only has she not been making time for me, she made a conscience choice not to. The upshot? Friend who invited me? Thumbs up. He was kind enough to explain his reasoning and in my mind it makes perfect sense. 500 favors friend, who I certainly had no reason whatsoever to think she's been blowing me off all effing summer until I found this out? Thumbs down. Downgrade it to acquaintance. Well OP, all things considered, I think it's a positive update. You found out that the friend who invited you was actually a really good and thoughtful friend and the person you've been doing so many favors to actually wasn't and now you can stop that. So here's wishing you the best in the future OP. Thanks so much for sharing and take care.
And that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch it. Now, if you've gotten to this point in the video, I assume that you like these stories that I'm reading out. So here are a couple more that you might enjoy. And if you don't have any time to watch another story right now, save it for later. And also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button.